from SiriusXM Studios in Los Angeles, California. This is Volume West with your hosts, Chad Smith of the Red Hot Chili Peppers and music editor for Yahoo Entertainment, Lindsay Parker. I think my chair is broken. Just wing it. I'm very short. It's the magic of live radio. I'm not that short normally. <laughs> You're taller than me right now, Lindsay. I'm going to enjoy that's it while it lasts. a last. rare, rare, even with Super your rare. six inch spiky heels. Super rare, as all the photos of us where I come up to about your elbow show. Mm. Hi, I'm Lindsay Barger. The short guy to my left is Chad Smith. Oh. And we are joined in the studio. You're listening in Volume West with Darren Malakian uh, from System of a Down and, of course, Scars on Broadway. Welcome. Hello, the other short guy on your left. <laughs> <laughs> He's not short. Just so dominant. He's not. So yeah, we're excited to have I'm you here. We're, you have an album coming out with Scars on Broadway in July. Yes. Tell us about it. Uh, it's an album I recorded like five or six years ago. Oh. Wow. Yeah. It's been in the can. <laughs> yeah, I've just been waiting to see what happens with my other band. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, that was part of the reason why I didn't release it for okay. so long. Right. So. And it's yeah. called um, Dictator. Yes. So. So was this originally, I think I've read that perhaps you had intended these songs for System and or for some other project? Describe well, I, the background I, of its making. I waited to release this album because we weren't sure if there was going to be a System album or not. Right. So I was going to maybe use some of these songs if there was going to be a System album. But since we couldn't all get on the same page with that, I just said uh let me just release it on my own <laughs> and then when it comes out the other guys in the band will be like dude why didn't you keep those for yeah right <laughs> well a couple of them did say that that's part of the reason why I, you know you waited, waited on it yeah you must be so excited to have them finally be heard it's it's nice to finally release some new music for me yeah the first scars album was all the way in a 2008 no yeah yeah so it's been it's been quite a while. You know, these guys like to take their time. They're not in a rush. <laughs> yeah. There's no rush. Let it cook. Yeah. Marinate. It needs to have full term. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when you recorded these songs five or six years ago or wrote them five or six years ago, like, did you just put them aside for a while? Like, how did it feel to revisit them and how long it had been since you, you know, like, did you just put them away and forget them about them? And then. No, I, I've always been writing. So I've got plenty of new material aside from this. Um, I, I I didn't really sit there and think about the songs. I knew the album was there. It was just a matter of, well, am I going to release it as Scars? Am, are they going to be system songs? So, you know, I didn't really sit there and listen to the album over and over yeah. again <laughs> or anything like that. But, you know, every time someone came over, you know, I'd be like, wait, you want to hear the Scars album that's never been released? <laughs> the unreleased Scars so I, yeah. I would get a chance to hear it during that time. Right. right. So you had listening parties. You know, it's, yeah. funny, it's funny. People will, will, I don't know if this happens to you, but they'll be like, dude, you, know, you ever sit, like, you ever just put on like your old album and like sit around and listen to it? I'm like, no, no. never. No. <laughs> a, you make it, you write it for a long time. You make the record, you listen over and over and over. Then you go on tour and play it yeah. over and over and over and over for two years. Once the sequencing is done for me, once I'm done sequencing the album and it's mastered, I never ever listen yeah. to it again if it comes on the radio i'm like oh okay. yeah that's yeah, yeah that's nice yeah. yeah okay i remember that is um we have a mutual producer rick rubin who yeah. we worked with for, for many years and these guys too and i always asked rick i'm like do you ever do you, you know i think something came on and i was like oh you did this record i don't remember what it was i think it was i think it was a tom petty record mm. wildflowers that he did it's a great album mm -hmm. and and we were working on something else and he referenced a song off wildflowers like maybe it could be like this and and i go and he go i go do you ever you know do you ever like hear those he goes i net once the record's done i never and he's made a lot of records. yeah he goes i never listened to the records and he did say he goes the only one that i did put on he goes when tom petty passed away he goes like i actually have such good 
positive memories of making that Wildflowers record. I did put that on, listen to it. and Well, he know. listens to the songs as much as we oh. do when we're right. recording Maybe them. Maybe more. Yeah, with the mixing and exactly. everything else that's going on. So. I know. So he knows them in, in and out. Yeah. Do you guys well. want to share some fun Rick Rubin stories while I just uh, Do you have any fun here? ones? <laughs> Fun? Uh, Is that the wrong I mean, adjective? If, if, if he was here, he'd just probably be laying down, right? Uh, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that's how Rick, Rick produces in the horizontal position, yeah. for sure. I've heard that before, but somehow the magic still happens. No, he he's chill. I mean, I have you? Let me ask you this: Have you? In in and we worked for them for twenty since ninety one, so twenty five years. Yeah. I, I've he's made, the only producer I've ever had. I've never really? ever worked Wait, with all any, the system records. They're all with they're Rick, all Rick and the scar stuff I produce myself. Right. So I have never worked with another producer but right. Rick Rubin. Right. Wow. There you go. And I and I mean I've worked with other people, but in the, not in the, in the Chili Peppers. The first record before we did Blood Sugar was a different producer, but since '91, it's been Rick. Yeah. And that, so I'm curious. For us, we would write our songs and come up with arrangements and the best we could, and you know, get a batch of songs, maybe 20, 25 songs or whatever it is. And then we invite Rick into the rehearsal room and he sits down and we play him all of our songs as best as we can, you mm -hmm. know, and he's just kind of sits there and he's like, mm-hmm, that, yeah, or, mm, <laughs> what else do you, one of his favorite things, what else you got? <laughs> That's not good. No. <laughs> what then, what else you got is what not else, good. That's not what you hear. That's not what you want to hear. You're playing your heart out, like as hard as you can. Like yeah. you, these songs are so emotional. So you're so connected to them for six or nine months. Like, well, wait till you hear this one. This one's really or good. He'll, we, be, he'll say like, I think we've, we've done that yeah, before. That's the, exactly. Yeah. No, I think you did that on the two records ago or yeah. something. And you're like, fuck. And then you could play <laughs> something that you threw together two parts from Tuesday. It'll be great. He's like, that's really good. Great. You need to make some, yeah, <laughs> make something out of that. Great. <laughs> great. 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 Exactly. <laughs> but my favorite move of Rick's is when we're tracking and he'll do the control room glass. What He will get up from his horizontal position when the song's over and you're playing. And he's rocking. And if he's moving, yeah. that's a good thing. Yeah. But but if he's not, he's kind of looking down, looking around like something doesn't sound quite right. And you finish the song. And he used to, he used to do this to me. He'd be like, he'd go. Oh, yeah. Chad just, is plugging his I'm nose right now like something nose. stinks. Yeah, I've gotten that a lot. And that's <laughs> and it's brutal because you're... you're he, called me, he, he, he told me I was once... He goes, you were playing like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah he I'm, said you're playing that was on our first album i had never worked with him before right and he said and you had no other you didn't know other i was producers. brand new to the yeah. business i was brand new to everything and i was like all right what do i say to him <laughs> <laughs> right you know so uh yeah like, I mean, what's he's... the ultimate compliment though when he really loves something what does he say or do great he just says great, great. yeah when he says great that's great? it when somebody and says, come on in I think we got it. Come on in. After playing it like 55 times, he'll make you play the same song a lot. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how many times I could say, but like just the same song over and over and over and over again when we're recording. Yeah. And it can happen. Yeah. This is Volume West. You're yeah. listening to Volume West with Chad Smith, Lindsey Parker, who is me, and Darren Malakian, who's talking about his new album with Scars on Broadway. And we're having a little kind of behind the music session about Rick Rubin, <laughs> which I'm thoroughly enjoying. His ears are ringing wherever they are. <laughs> I've always been curious, though, about I've heard that he just, unlike some producers who are very hands on, that he's very hands off. Well, he, well and I don't know how, as as a non musician, I don't know how that works. He's hands on in in. For, with with our situation and when I worked as, with them with other artists and and more in the the pre-production part yes. of it when you have and your vocals song, and vocals he's really hands-on with the vocals which yeah. I'm not part of that but yeah but he does like you know the drums he spends a lot of time Absolutely. he probably like takes out all your fills exactly <laughs> <laughs> all the part that you're having all fun the, playing yeah he will get all the like all, all the like watch this uh, <laughs> this bitching part i came up with like yeah this is the, and it's musical and it's really cool and unique and you play it and you'll be like first to me he goes he'll press some talk back chad did you always do that going into the second <laughs> quarter like, fuck i tried to sneak that shit in and he got me um what would phil rudd do yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. ACDC, like his favorite. Yeah. What would Phil Ray? He just probably just bang crash, right? Do that. Fuck! Ah! Yep. 
right? Yeah, just cleaning it all up. Cleaning it up. And then, you know what? And at the time, you're like, God, you know, you're kind of like, fucking man, I'm afraid, you know? And then then you go back and listen to it. Go, eh, he's, 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 Makes he's, sense. He was right, yeah. yeah. He, or his other thing was, that's good for the live version. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, that's shady. You can be you know, cold. You know can be great, real cold. You know what's great about Rick is he's he's not a musician. So yeah. he really listens to it as a listener sometimes right. when you're a musician you listen to music and you play the music right. with a whole different perspective yeah um so he's i think to them i think as, yeah as he's, a music fan yeah he's listening to it like the person in the car and i would listen that's, to that's, it and that's, that's important it is and yeah. what makes him really great too. yeah and he's such a lover of all kinds of mm -hmm. music he's got such a great you know huge wide range of of love of music yeah but he's he is he listens as a fan and he's not emotionally connected to it like we're we'll write mm -hmm. him for nine months or whatever and then play him for him and he's never heard him before he doesn't know how or when or how it yeah. came up you know he's just listening to, this is what i like he's this uh, sounds good to me you know, or had, this doesn't he's there, not wishy-washy about it there are some people that worked with him that i've known that <laughs> i won't name any names but like will come up to me after they're done with the album and they're like what does he do <laughs> you, you know, they're, me that? they're done with the album by the way yeah. they're like what did he do with you guys? yeah yeah you know who told me you know who said that to me tony iomi from black sabbath yeah tony came up wow. to me and he goes what is he pretty much that like well since you're naming names i guess the slipknot guys came up to me <laughs> 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 right what, yeah. Well, he's it, it, it's it's a it's a certain style. He works well with some. I think he works yeah. really well with you guys. Yep. That's why you know you guys have done so many yep. albums with us and yep. with us. See, he was our he's our label right. also with System. So you know, to get another producer would be like pissing off your label a little. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was I, I'm up. I'm very comfortable working with him, and I and I co-produced the albums with Rick. So. Mm. Yeah, so I'm I'm he he's in there just as much as I want him to be. Mm. Anybody else would be a little bit too overbearing for me cuz right. there's a lot of stuff that I like to handle myself yeah. as well. Yeah. Well, we were talking about American Idol and the Voice earlier. I want to propose to any network people who are in the position to greenlight a show. I just want the Rick Rubin <laughs> reality show where he just either plugs his nose or says, "Great, you come, you audition." He plugs his nose. He says, "Great." Yeah. He leaves. Orders, then... <laughs> orders food, lays on the couch. I would his watch. His guy will that bring shit. him the food. Yep. Who wouldn't watch that shit? I would watch. That well, shit. there wouldn't be any. There, w there is no gray area. <laughs> There's not a lot of gray area, and 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 when you guys worked with, I mean, I don't take up all the time talking about Rick, but mm -hmm. what um, would would if you really felt strongly, and saying you and you co co produced those records as well, so you're in that position, if you really felt strongly, like Rick was like, I, you know, I really that that doesn't work, or or wasn't digging the direction of where someone was going, and you felt really strongly about it, he with us, he would go, okay, yes, uh, yeah, okay, and that yeah. and he would do the same thing, okay, yeah, good. but the same way if he came in and he added something to it that i thought it was amazing i would be yeah, totally yeah, yeah. okay yeah. with trying it uh -huh. and once i tried it you know and i was digging it yeah we're good we're yeah. good to go yeah it's, it's I, like i said he's he's been the perfect guy yeah. for system you know yeah awesome well we have to take a break but when we come back we're going to continue to talk with you about scars on broadway we're also going to talk about our favorite bands so, Darren, think about what your favorite band is, because we're going to talk about uh -oh. our favorite bands and why they're our favorite bands. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. There's much more with Chad Smith of the Red Hot Chili Peppers and music editor for Yahoo Entertainment, Lindsay Parker. Live from the City of Angels on Volume West, Sirius XM 106. California. from Sirius XM Studios in Los Angeles, California. This is Volume West with your hosts, Chad Smith and Lindsay Parker. Hey, this is Lindsay. That is coming up. Chad. Hello. I always <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your conversation. I, yeah, with myself. We'll continue it on the air. You're Chad, I'm Lindsay, and we're here with Darren Malakian from System of a Down and, of course, Scars on Broadway. We're also going to take calls. If you have any questions for Darren, please call us. 
at 1-844-686-5863. And later, you, not now, but later you can call that number because we'll be giving away a Led Zeppelin box set, How the West Was Won Live, No Purchase Necessary, courtesy of Rhino Records, No, no Canadians. Canadians. <laughs> That's like the, I don't know why, but well, no, can, that? if you are, sorry, Canadians, we don't make the rules. We like and you must be over 18. So if you are like a coffee. child from Canada. If you're a child yeah. from Canada, you're out of luck. But please call us now. At, I'll say the number again. 1-844-686-5863. We're talking with Darren Malakian. And we were talking a lot before the break about Rick Rubin and, and his your your memories of both working with him. But I know on this new Scars album coming out, you pretty much did everything yourself, right? Yeah, I played everything. I played the drums. Guitar, you did? Bass. Yeah. You did? I did. I was really excited about that. Awesome. Yeah, I wow. still am. It's my drum debut. <laughs> wow. I always, I've, I always. Were you a drummer first? No. Oh, well, in in my head, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Didn't you want to be a drummer? I though? always wanted to be yeah. a drummer. Your and said no. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, Nick knows. Wow, you, know? you did your homework, yeah. Nick. Good job, Nick. Your parents yeah. said no. Well, most parents little Johnny. How about getting you a drum set? It was That's a good idea. It wasn't that they said no. It was that they didn't think that they could turn it down i grew up in a small apartment in hollywood yeah and uh when we moved to glendale we lived in a, a house now and i was like yes i can get my, get my drum drums. drums now we're gonna have a garage and and yeah. so we go to the music store when it was my birthday and i'm excited about my drum set and i think they had like a private conversation amongst themselves <laughs> oh they said, did you know <laughs> they did we, we're oh, yeah. better off getting him a little amplifier that he can turn off and a guitar and so i walk out with a guitar and here i am wow but now you're getting your revenge yeah i'm getting my playing the drums as yeah. loud as you want yeah drums. yeah do you guys so want to do funny. any drum geek talk drum talk no no <laughs> no you did I with mick fleetwood a couple weeks ago it was kind of yeah a little cool. b well you know I don't. I, Mick Fleetwood is like not me on the drums. <laughs> <laughs> not yet, not yet, but you're just starting. You know, and Mick is trying to be you on the drums, <laughs> but he's not you yet. Not yet. <laughs> he, he's no Mick Fleetwood. Um, so, but then you have a band who are playing all of your parts. Yes. Well, let me ask you this. I always wonder because when you record, do you. What what when you play all the instruments yourself? And I know like with Dave with Foo Fighter stuff when he used to play all the instruments, he would do the drums first. How did how does it how does it go with you? No, it was guitars Guitar. first to yeah. a, to like a, a click or to a click. Yeah, I already knew the arrangements yeah, yeah. and the vocals that that so it just played along to my guitar track. Okay, guitar, see, he's a guitarist first, drummer second, yeah, or third. I don't know. <laughs> I, I sing too, so yeah. that you could, you, say that, you could say that was my first instrument. It is <laughs> <laughs> right out of the wombs. You did this whole album in just ten days or something like that. Yeah, so I tracked I it pretty quick. <laughs> Five years later. <laughs> Five, yeah, the, the album was real easy to put together. It was putting it out has been a little bit more tricky. And your dad doing the artwork. Check this out. This is and check this out, people. I know you can see this in Radio Radio <laughs> Land. Um, there's a it's man, a dude pointing. It's a dude pointing, but he's a, he's really looking cool. Serious. Though. Yeah, and your dad's done some artwork for your other records too, and some system records. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty cool. And he had, and you told him about it, and then he like. I just said the album's gonna be called Dictator. A week later, he came boom. up with that, and that was as and easy as that. Was Could it you go to your dad and go? I don't really like it. I no, I have, oh. I have. It's hard. It's tough to do, but what I. Did you get for not getting me that yeah. fucking drum set, Dad? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's your revenge. Ha! Your artwork sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, Dad. I'm you're listening out there. This is really awesome. <laughs> I know how to make friends around here. I really do. Um, no, but it 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 it's, it it looks great. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. You're in. You're up and running. The title July was July twentieth, right? Was yeah. the album always going to be called Dictator back five, <clears throat> six years ago, or is it more <laughs> pre Donald Trump? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I wasn't sure what it was going to be called yet. So, yeah, I just thought Dictator had like this real strong kind of imagery, and I don't know, kind of maybe related to things that might be going on yeah, these maybe. days here yeah, and there. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. it's interesting because you wrote the songs. I assume you wrote the lyrics as well mm -hmm. a long time ago in 2012. Yeah. Was it 2012? Yeah. So, you know, it was a different time then. So, like, how, when you revisit these lyrics now in 2018, like, have, do you see them in a different perspective or like do they still not really a dictator could it doesn't have to be politics you can you can have someone in your life that's a dictator you can have a friend a spouse a family member that is a bit of a dictator so you could you could telling you you can't play the drums yeah i guess <laughs> you know so you know it, it's 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 not just about politics yeah. or you know i see yeah so what is the future of System of Down? I know you're touring soon, right? You're going to, for the first time in like three three years, something like that? No, um, no, no. no. We played we last year. Sorry. We, we played like last year in Europe. Uh, first time in U.S. In uh, three years. For, for a while, yeah. I don't know okay. exactly when. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're doing like a little West Coast run. Um, Scars is playing August 4th. So I got that going on at the Fonda. Oh, nice. oh wow! Yeah, that Ooh. will be. Do you like playing a smaller venue? Like I that? do. I prefer it. I I really feel like it's more intimate, yeah. and you know, yeah. it's it's nice to have the options. I guess you well, we, know, we like were, good we, problem to have. Yeah, right. We right. were talking about Bruce Springsteen on Broadway. So how about Scars on Broadway? With on Bruce Broadway. Springsteen. <laughs> scars on Broadway. Springsteen on Broadway. opens up <laughs> for Scars on Broadway. You already have it in your name. There you go. Do a nice um, intimate show there. Yeah. The uh, um. So you're just doing the one right now at Fonda? Is that the uh, there's that one show at the Fonda, and we've got something we're going to do in Mexico City in October. Right. There's some stuff, you know, yeah. in the works with some live scar stuff. And then, you know, there's the system stuff happening in October. So I'll be pretty busy with this album release and the yeah. system yeah. stuff, rehearsing with two bands, you know. Keeping you busy. Yeah, it's fun, Good. though. Yeah. You know, it's fun. Better than sitting around. Yeah. <laughs> Been sitting, around. been sitting around it's good to have a job yeah you know? well, i've never worked a day in my yeah, life it's not like a real job <laughs> yeah, me neither, yeah, me neither. just like bruce, you know. just like bruce springsteen right right yeah. um i'm sure you system fans are, are gonna you know if i'm gonna preempt anybody that calls they're probably gonna wonder like when are you gonna make another mm -hmm. record mm -hmm. day? And, and uh um what do you got any ideas on that one or no no okay. i don't we're thank you <laughs> Instead of like, yeah, we're working on something. No. Like I talked to Danny from Tool. I've got I've got tons of songs written. Okay. For either band, so Scars or System. I I it's have coming a, out I have one way or another. Yeah, I have tons of songs written. Beautiful. Just you know, I I can't force. Yeah. You know. I know certain people to get on the same page with right. me. You know, yeah. with making a new system album. But right. you know, if it was up to me, there had been a new system album every two or three years in the last ten years. You know. So do you mind me asking what what is? I mean, obviously you're touring together and and stuff. Why uh, why are you why haven't you put a record out? I just you know we have different viewpoints on how we want to make the record on uh, you know how much time we want to spend. Uh, I mean, it, it's just. Uh, it's complicated, you know. It's complicated. it's complicated being in a band, isn't it? Yeah, it yeah, is. It really in, is. In, in system, it is. <laughs> Our band, it is. Yeah, I think in most bands. Yeah, especially but, when there's yeah. like, if it's not one guy saying like, you know, one sort of leader of the band, so to speak. When it's more of a democracy, which I think I don't know if you use that word. It, it is a democracy, but in this case, it kind of is one guy okay. that's kind of holding it back right. a little bit. Yep. But um. But that's you cool though. We still, do but we, don't we still, do. we still, we still play, play. We yeah, still yeah. get along. We're, yeah. we're still friends, you yeah. know. So, yeah, yeah. awesome. Well, we are listening, or sorry, you guys are listening. We are talking on Volume West on Sirius XM Channel 106. I'm Lindsay Parker. I'm Lars Ulrich. Yep, great to see you again, Lars. Ulrich. <laughs> Pronounce I'm, your name right. It's Ulrich. You're also known I'm as, Danish. You're also known as Chad Smith occasionally. Occasionally. And we're here with Darren Malakian from Scars on Broadway, and we're we're talking about we're sort of talking about your childhood, Darren, and about how oh you want. No, we're gonna have my childhood. I, you have to move. He has to get down on the couch. No. I was trying we're to set up the next we... question. My it, dad I... left me in my crib till I was five. No, we're not gonna have a therapy session. Okay. Uh, unless you were scarred, no pun intended, by the fact that you weren't allowed to play drums when you were younger. But what I was trying to say was you were talking about that, and um, obviously you got into music at a young age. And one of the topics we're going to open up the phones to and talk about ourselves is our favorite bands, the bands that made us who we are. So I want to know, 
what's like your ultimate your favorite band the band that has inspired you put you on on this musical journey you had to name one i don't know if they're my favorite band but anytime anybody asks me that question yeah. van halen awesome <laughs> awesome I, I don't know it's that's just great. that's that's what comes to I mind love it. we already talked about van halen before you came in it's a, love it. a frequent topic of conversation on volume west so we we appro approve this choice thank you thank you more the the roth era or the hagar era the david lee roth mm -hmm. era. yeah we're all like yeah i i no offense to the Van Halen guys or Sammy Hagar, I don't think I really own any of those. No, uh, and I I played in a band with him for a while with Michael and Sam oh, okay. and Joe Satriani. And but, you still didn't. <laughs> the first time I met him in Cabo, he was like, "Hey, do you want to jam?" And I'm like, "Yeah." And I go, "But I don't know any Van Hagar songs." <laughs> And he was totally cool. He's like, that's okay, man. And I go, but I know everything off the first Montrose album. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he's like, great, we'll do the whole thing. And I was like, great. So well, that probably made him happier. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, it was just a great, great album yeah. when, I, when I was a kid growing up. But yes, I am a, a Van Halen. I mean. So what, Darren, how did you get yeah. introduced to Van Halen? How did they? Is it Eddie or the band or the whole thing? Just yeah. the band. The, whole the thing. sound of those yeah. albums, the way the cymbals like just hiss <laughs> through the whole Spice thing. Tees. Yeah, just, I don't know. Yeah, he was a, a, a writer, and, a and crash they're, they're writer. So, if you listen to them, they're really unique. Like David Lee Roth is an extremely unique lead singer. And, <laughs> and the influences he brings in are are wacky yeah. in in some ways that, wacky is a good word that, for it <laughs> yeah that that just you wouldn't you it's just him there is yeah. nobody else that does that yeah. you know and yeah. we were very saying unique. we want him to be on broadway david lee roth on broadway very original original yep. rock band in, showman yeah yeah well just the whole band the whole in general. Thing. yeah i agree i mean because nobody was doing what eddie van halen was doing with the guitar so that was extremely original at that time right as well you know yeah. so. did you learn to play uh guitar playing along too oh, i can't play any of that stuff <laughs> <laughs> you play, could you play eruption no no, no. i i could play like talking about love like the, the intro you know <laughs> I, you, i'm i never cared never to learn learned all that, all that learn shit. all that technical solo stuff i was always yeah. into songs and writing songs yeah. and arrangements right. you know but yeah. um but I appreciate it. I mean, yeah. it's good stuff. It's amazing. Well, we need to take a break. But when we come back, we'll talk about our favorite bands, including Van Halen. We'll talk. Chad, I'm going to find. I think I know what your answer is. but And I think you know what mine is. But we'll be talking about our favorite bands. And we also will open up the phones and say, how, what's your favorite band? And how were you introduced to that band? So we'll be right back. This is Volume West with Chad Smith of the Red Hot Chili Peppers and music editor for Yahoo Entertainment, Lindsay Parker, on Volume, Sirius XM 106. from Sirius XM Studios in Los Angeles, California. This is Volume West. With your hosts, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame drummer Chad Smith of the Red Hot Chili Peppers and music editor for Yahoo Entertainment, Lindsay Parker. I thought you were Lars Ulrich, not Chad Smith. Uh, next week. Next week. You heard it here first. Hi, I'm Lindsay Parker. That is Chad Smith. We're here with Darren Malaki, and you're listening to Volume West. And we have been talking about, or we're about to talk about, our favorite bands. Darren, we went down memory lane talking about Van Halen. Do you have any more Van Halen thoughts? No. No? You just, that was the final <laughs> definitive word. Did you word. see him play back I've never day? seen them live. <gasps> what? No. Favorite band, never seen him? Never seen him live. Never seen Roth solo? Oh no. I saw him in Vegas. That was an interesting experience. No. And one time, the greatest. my drummer, John, uh, he has like a car dealer friend or somebody that knew Eddie Van Halen. And uh, I guess through that car dealer John got Eddie Van Halen's phone number and got to meet Eddie Van Halen. I was like, you dick. <laughs> I was like, you didn't call me for that? I, I you feel dick, like Eddie. <laughs> Maybe Eddie's listening right now. He could call know. us. John, he meant John. 
Um, Baby Eddie can call us now at 1-844-686-5863, yeah. or you guys can call us because we want to know, how were you introduced to your favorite band? How has their legacy stood the test of time? And what is the one album you would give to someone to get them into your favorite band? I was not reading that off a sheet at all. That was completely natural. Yeah, that sounded that way. Chad. Yeah. What's your favorite band? Um, well, I have lots of favorites. But if I had to choose one, I would have to say rock music. I would have to say a little band called Led Zeppelin. I've heard of them. Some people say Zeppelin. I've heard of them as well. Yeah. The Led Zeppelin. I enjoy their music very much. Many people do. You were at the uh, the London O2 show, and so was I. We oh, didn't know it? each other then, but nope. we both were at that reunion. It was 10 years ago, actually more, 10 and a half years ago oh already. God. Yeah. December uh, So is Bonham your favorite guy? Is Pro that your guy? Pro probably, yeah. When I was growing up, um, playing and starting to play the drums, like... Yeah, Bonham and Ian Pace from Deep mm -hmm. Purple. Yeah, I love underrated him. guy. No one brings him up too much, but he's he's amazing. amazing. And I love Deep Purple. Yeah, he's a he's a big part of the drive of that band. Big yeah. time, and he swings so hard. And and when growing up, I had no idea. I just wanted to play like him. And he had, he's pretty technical. And he's got he took but just the sound, and Bonham sound, and mm -hmm. of course the music led up on and the way he played, and and so um, yeah. Those those guys and Mitch Mitch Mitchell from from Jimi Hendrix's band yeah. too. I loved him. So it's... you didn't pick just one in the end. You picked. Them. Well, I could no. have picked more than Van Halen <laughs> yeah. too. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. No, well, we were talking drummers, but those no, bands are, are amazing. Is it Bonham that made you get into playing the drums in the first place? <sighs> no, it it, it was um, just wanting to hit shit. <laughs> <laughs> I started playing the drums when I was seven, so. Um, I listened to my, my brother's records, but before that, I just kind of, you know, just hit stuff around the house. And then my dad, um, who also was like, mm, I don't know if he's really serious about this drumming thing. We're not going to buy, buy Chad a drum set or anything like we wouldn't have the means anyway. So he went and took, uh, uh the Baskin Robin ice cream tubs from the garbage can Aww. down the street and Lincoln log little kids drum, drum they weren't drumsticks play toys mm -hmm. so that's what that's what i played on and tore those up pretty quick to cardboard yeah i used to set up like pillows and all <laughs> kinds of things and yeah. put on like record and just play yeah. to those records yeah. you know me too yeah that's it that's what you do well this would be a great opportunity for me to read from another sheet of paper because guess what we are giving away a led zeppelin box set how the west was won live remastered audio for 180 gram vinyl lps uh, what else can I tell you about this? It highlights the best performances from Zeppelin's legendary concerts from the Forum and Long Beach Arena right here in Southern California on June 25th and 27th, 1972. Melded together and sequenced to replicate a single concert from beginning to end, the 4LP collection captures the band at the height of their formidable powers. There's a 25-minute version of Dazed and Confused, a 21-minute medley based around Whole Lot of Love, and the performances also capture the band, introducing songs from a then unreleased album houses of the holy which came out nine months later uh no purchase necessary courtesy of rhino records God. you canadians are screwed you can't call in but if you are over 18 and not from canada you can call in if you're the sixth caller the number is 1-844-686-5863 and while we are waiting for that um why don't you uh elaborate do you have a, a do you have a favorite band i think you know who it is but in case those yeah. listening do not yes it's a yes. band called the cure Backstreet boys I, they're all right but that they're that's not Best my, it. all yeah, right don't derail this conversation it's about the cure oh very nice uh <laughs> he's like i love the early cure when they yes. were goth oh, there you and, go and dark there well, you go what's really interesting is one of the reasons i mean there's so many reasons i i love the cure and and we don't have time to no I was just i'm looking at my i'm like how much yeah. time do we got left <laughs> but you make a really interesting point is that when you say you like the cure you're kind of liking multiple bands in one like their very first album three imaginary boys was very sparse and punky and mm -hmm. kind of very buzzcocks inspired but very melodic obviously they had you know boys don't cry was on that album then they got super goth Those three albums 
Is it 17 uh, seconds, faith, faith and pornography? And pornography, yeah. pornography is when they got super dark. Yeah. But what, you know, what I was introduced to them was what were the hits on MTV in the 80s, which were at that time it was kind of the trilogy of Love Cats, Let's Go to Bed, and The Walk, mm -hmm. which actually aren't that representative, particularly The Walk and Love and uh, Walk and Let's Go to Bed are like synthy songs. They're actually yeah. probably the most dated sounding Cure mm -hmm. singles because they're really synthy and poppy. So it's funny is that's what I liked about them. And when I was a kid, my grandparents were going on a trip to Europe. And to me, watching MTV and liking bands like The Cure and Depeche Mode, to me, London, England was the holy grail. That's where all the cool shit happened, right? Like, so I gave my grandparents a 20, like a list of 20 band names and said, can you go record shopping for me and buy me records by these bands? Wow. So they just randomly brought me back one Cure record. And it was the top. If you know that album, it's not anything like The Walk or Love Cats. It's a super super acid record it's like a heavy psychedelic it's the one that has piggy in the mirror on it and you know uh, banana fish bones it's so not commercial it's a freaky record and i put it on i was like is this are you, are you sh is there another cure is this like the <laughs> cure uk but it was great and then after that and you know after that they did uh i guess the head on the door was next and that obviously that i think that sort of kind of set the template for the sound they became which was kinda, kiss me kiss me kiss, kiss me, me kiss me yeah. kiss me they were so good at being like cheerful and poppy and super depressing yeah, at the same time. Right. I don't know. It's actually, I mean, I think there's so many things, but I think the one takeaway I could take from this, and I, I interviewed uh, Lowell Tolhurst, who formed the band with Robert Smith, and uh, did a really great memoir. It's kind of his version of Just Kids. It's called Two Imaginary Boys. It's mm. about his friendship with Robert because they knew each other from childhood, from like age five. Oh my God, you must have loved that. Oh, that book is amazing. <laughs> and, um, you know, they grew up in the suburbs in. Um, a city kind of near Gatwick Airport outside London called Crawley and it's basically like any suburb and they didn't necessarily have really difficult lives they had just kind of like banal suburban lives and but you know they wanted to get out and do something more and they had that angst and I think they really gave voice to a generation of kind of boys really uh, suburban angsty boys I think they set the template for emo like it was them mm. and the Smiths I would say it's like it was okay to be in touch with your feelings it was okay mm. to not be a, a jock it was not it was okay to not be much it was okay to be whiny and cry and sing songs about how you were sad you know and I think a lot a whole a lot of generation and generations really connected to that you know they were in their little suburban towns thinking like oh life's kind of boring and I'm I don't know why but I'm sad and They'd hear Robert Smith sing in this voice that kind of sounds like he's crying. And um, really, you know, it really resonated with people and still does. And, you know, so aside from any other reason, I just think they really made it okay to be sensitive for a generation of, they've of got, boys. They've got a lot of big songs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you, you look you down go, the catalog. Yeah, you go see them playing. You're like, oh, yeah, this one. Oh, yeah. And this one. When they oh, did the yeah, Hollywood Bowl residency, when they did three <clears throat> um, shows at the Bowl in 2016, they had a different set list every night. It was, you know, hits. It was deep cuts. It was B-sides. They have so much. And um, it's funny because now we use the word alternative rock and we kind of think of like 90s alternative rock. We think that means, you know, Nirvana onward. But like they, along with, I'd say, Depeche Mode mm -hmm. and New Order and kind mm -hmm. of all those bands that got played on K-Rock in the 80s. That's what alternative meant for me growing up. It mm -hmm. meant this like doomy music from England. And I think you can hear all of those bands. I mean, is there anyone who can say that they weren't influenced by The Cure in some way, given that they have such a breadth of catalog? Van Halen. <laughs> Maybe not them. Maybe not them. All right. I'm, I'm done talking about The Cure for a moment. This is Volume West, Sirius XM 106. Hey, Ben, you never know. I could see David Lee Roth being a big Robert Smith fan. He, I interviewed him once. I don't know. I can't picture those I dudes know. listening to The Cure. <laughs> just... I, think Roth is, I think Roth is more sensitive than you're giving credit for. He's a sensitive uh, guy. Maybe we, maybe. we have a call. Nick. Yeah, Michelle. I'm going to ask her what she calling for. Michelle, what did, what did you want? What do you want? Oh, I was calling. <laughs> what do you want? I was calling about Led Zeppelin. Oh, you so guys you're... are giving some Led, Ze Led Zeppelin away. Oh, but... so you want to win it then? I was hoping. Well, guess what, Michelle? You won. Did I? Oh my God! Congratulations! That's are wow. you happy about you guys. this? That was so easy. I love your show. <laughs> you didn't have to like answer a question you know... or. Who's the bass player or anything? Just call and win. We're so easy here on the West Coast. <laughs> I mean, she was caller number six, Chad. Was she? Yeah. Oh, was that yeah. the deal? She oh. had to make some effort. 
Oh, okay. Nice, nice being number six. Get the forty-five minute version of no quarter now. Yeah, <laughs> can't wait. Go take a shower and eat, and then come back. <laughs> well, Michelle, I'm gonna put you on hold, and we're gonna take your info down. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you. Cool. There we go. She's All right. the big winner. That's Michelle. it. Yeah. Where's she from? She's from San Diego. Oh, okay. I'll drive it down to you. <laughs> And I'll and I'll admit, whole lot of love and days to confuse won't be over yet. <laughs> well, yeah, right. that box that's a, a live album. So going back to the subject of Zeppelin, and as I mentioned earlier, we were at that oh, reunion right, show. Right, right. We had the golden ticket. Yes, I'm kind of selfishly thinking, uh, as much as a lot of people would like to see Led Zeppelin reunite, and it seems like because of Robert Plant, it's probably not going to happen because he's not interested because he's doing his own thing. I'm kind of selfishly happy that that. I was don't know only... what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> he feels left out. He didn't get to. He didn't get to go. Well, a lot of people. You know what? Twenty million over twenty million requests for tickets. Are you serious? Yeah. For like. It was pretty special. Uh, Fifteen thousand seats. And like I, I said, kind of selfishly, I'm kind of glad it was just a one-off because it made it really special that it wasn't just the kickoff of a never-ending reunion tour on the oldie circuit. That you know, if you were there, you can say you were there. Yeah. So what was it like when you went? Were you freaking out because you're such a fan? Yeah, I mean, I, I got to take my brother, my older brother, who really turned me on to the band, and, and and we both, you know, loved all things Led Zeppelin. So the only reason I got to go is our manager managed Jimmy Page at the time. Mm -hmm. That's the only. Eddie reason. Vedder didn't hook you up. No, Eddie. Eddie I got to do a to photo him. shoot once with Jimmy Page. Oh, was that? Really? That was just crazy. It was like. Was it for like Guitar Player was Magazine? Guitar Player. Was John, was, was John? Yes, he yeah. was there. Tom Morello? Yes, there was like 10, Zach, 10, bunch of dudes. 10 dudes or something like yep. that. And I walk in and it was like, it was weird. Like <laughs> There <laughs> like, he is. It was just, I don't know. I walk in and it's all these guitar players from all these bands that I love growing up, yeah. you know? And right. it was just like, kind of felt like a weird dream, you yeah. know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I was in the same place with all Slash and all these right. guys. And it was really wow. did, you, did you interact with, with Mr. Page at all? Yeah, I did. He yeah. seemed like a really quiet guy. Yeah. Yep. He didn't seem like too many people there knew him no. very well. So oh, okay. no, no, like as in personally. Oh, right. not they knew who he was. Yeah, yeah obviously. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But well, personally, sure. so he was kind of you know shy and yeah, but uh, nice, yeah. Ni approachable, cool, yeah. cool yeah. dude. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, cool. we played some shows and he's come seen us and and uh, you know you know when you play shows and there's somebody that. that you admire us watching you from the side of the stage or something and we played in a long time ago in Hyde Park we did some shows in in England and it's like Brian May Tony Iommi Roger Taylor from Queen as they well. all came together <laughs> yes all <laughs> in a van because that's what bands do they travel in vans all those dudes hang out <laughs> yeah together Ian Anderson from Jethro oh, Tull wow. Uh, wow. Jimmy Page um, I don't think I could play that show. I know. Man. I, I mean, know. Like what? And we're playing it's fucking like eighty thousand people. We're playing, and like I know they're there, and you can kind of see them. You know this glow of English royal rock yeah. royalty. You know, and I'm just like, I'm not gonna fucking look over there because if <laughs> like one of them's like, going, mm, I'm gonna be like, nah. you know, it gets in your head. Yeah, it really a little bit. So. um but there's they're you know they're music fans they're, they're of just, course yeah, it's just, yeah. and they're and sweet and they're, a lot of them are really down to earth people yeah, exactly that's the thing you get it in your head because when you're a kid you're like oh these guys are are icons yeah they're, like on a different they're, planet exactly yeah. like that. they don't they don't you know no, they're just people yep exactly do either exactly. of you have a story about meeting one of your heroes where you really did just kind of like lose it or inwardly at least lose it freak out and go I can't believe I'm in the same room with this person um, for me it, it, it um, meeting um meeting ringo star mm. and you just kind of looking at ringo and he again super sweet i did like this photo session for a charity thing with him and and i do have a kind of a story though his drum set is there and we had a bunch of drummers come and some other um celebrity types play the drums it was for a charity for ringo love and peace charity thing and he's there with his wife and then and we're outside and the drum sits by a pool and he's kind of sitting in the back and he comes up and hey how are you nice to meet you oh ringo wow you know he says thanks for doing it really really nice guy super nice but it's ringo you look at him and you're like you're like it's it's hard not to look it's at him and go, it's guy from the beatles <laughs> yeah you really try to not yeah just regular dude but like 
So you sit down. And what, did, what did you do? <laughs> I said, yeah, here it comes. And you sit down, and everyone kind of played a little bit, right? And they filmed you and, and, and want to take pictures of, of all these guys playing playing Ringo's drum set. So we're, I'm playing, and you're just... You know, he's behind you and you're playing your stupid licks and whatever by yourself, which is so boring to me. I hate playing by, without other people, but you're playing your booga da booga da booga da and your beats and stuff. And then um, the the guy that was filming, I forget his name, was like, can you play me one of, one of Ringo's? beats <laughs> <laughs> no. so i go so i go um i start playing tomorrow the intro to tomorrow never knows oh yeah and i play like a few bars of it and stuff and <clears throat> and i hear from behind me that's not how it goes oh boy <laughs> i was like oh no oh yeah and i turn around, i'm like i'm a, I'm pretty tall. I shrunk down to about four foot three. <laughs> and I, I go, oh, 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 oh. He goes, no, 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 mate. It's just with the left, just with the left, not both hands. Just so the two beats on the tom, because he was a, he is a left-handed drummer. He leads with his left playing a right-handed drum set. Wow. And that's kind of why he has an interesting his fills are, are, are leading with the left, which is a right-handed player often leads with the right. Mm -hmm. So he, he, it's an interesting way that, that his drums, another great thing about him, but I'm like, Oh, so he corrected me playing his beat. And then later he told me that he, did he, 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 he told his wife after I finished, he goes, I've never played so many notes in my life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So I got schooled by Ringo on his own beat, which is great. Yeah. You know, but have you have you met and had a, had some interaction where you're like, "Holy shit, I need a diaper." Mm. I mean, <laughs> I don't remember that kind of interaction, but I mean, I've met a few people that you know I respect. But David Bowie, once <gasps> we met him uh, after his show, he was such a nice guy. What were the circumstances of you meeting it, him? He was playing, I think, the Greek, maybe like ten, twelve years ago. And um, I went to see him and we got backstage and I was introduced to him, got to take a picture and he called me by my first name and it was like, wow, you know, and, and the way he treated everybody in the room was class, right. like just like. That's yeah. that's how you should be. Yeah. You know, I mean, he's David Bowie, dude. <laughs> you know, I don't care who you are. Right. <laughs> like he's David Bowie. Well, he like and everyone... he's not a dick. He's right. he was a really <laughs> cool dude. Right. And so it just, you know, and being it on the Ozfest, being around Ozzy was a big deal for me, like growing up as a heavy metal kid and seeing how down to earth he was, being around his family and, you know, just Cool, you know, you yeah. meet you meet some people that are in really big bands or just legends, and they're just down to earth people. And then you sometimes you meet a dude that's like, this band's kind of big on the Sunset Strip, <laughs> you know what I mean? And he <laughs> and just can't, dicks. he can't handle it. He's like a dick. It's and true. It's just the way the way you should be. You know, I kind of you got to learn from those people yeah. sometimes. I think that the, the people that I've had lucky to interact with were like that to me icons <clears throat> almost all the time they're like really got it together and yeah. there's a reason that they're still doing what they're doing mm -hmm. at that level i think know? when they mm -hmm. make you forget who they are right. i think that's that's the oh. way to be and david bowie totally made me forget that he was david bowie because he was so cool I will you say, know? I don't have time to tell the whole story because we got like literally one minute left, but the reason I do what I do, the reason I'm a music journalist is when I was 14 or 15 years old, I met my biggest hero. I met Robert Smith and he could not have been nicer to yeah. his fans. Took a photo with anyone who wanted a photo, autographed and had actual conversation, not just like high handshake, but like actually would take five minutes to talk to you. And... I didn't realize at the time that not all celebrities are like that. I just so to ha to meet your hero when you're 14 and not only have them be great but to surpass your expectations it kind of made me want to go maybe if he'd been a dick to me I would have been like I don't want to work changes in music. things. Mm -hmm. It'll change things for you. And a I told bit. him that years later and he said, "Well, how hard is it to spend a couple minutes talking to a fan who's been waiting to meet you?" I'm like, "Well, I've met enough celebrities since and I know not everybody would have been that gracious." Yeah. So Anyway, on that happy note, we need to wrap things up. Thank you so much, Darren, for coming in. Thank you for having me. Thank you guys Lots for listening awesome, to Volume dude. West. We'll be Good back next you. week Good at Monday. Too.